Hey everyone, so today's video we're going to be going over Fahim, who I've been really impressed with. Obviously with the introduction of Guan Yu, he's been uh, a real solid unit in boss fights. Um, specifically guild boss and then guild versus environment. He's also really good in ancient relic tiles, which is one of the clips I'll be showing you here today. But uh, I think this is a guy that goes under the radar. Uh, this is a hero that is, in my opinion, very similar to Opal. Opal was like the queen of dungeons um, whenever stages 16 came out. Um, you know, that joint attack is just really big. The problem is, is her joint attack falls off unless she kills people. So she still has relevance in like Ash Magisteria. But even with his, uh, you know, his rage meter, it's... It's still kind of wishy-washy, but Fahim, Fahim has a joint attack in his uh, kit as well, but he actually reduces the cooldown of his ultimate the more he hits somebody. Um, so he actually has the capability to have the joint attack up at all times, which is what makes him very useful. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about him a little bit. So he has this trait that grants him a stack of invincible whenever it's his turn. So... Uh, if this was at the start of the battle, it would be really good and also really bad because it would be really good for PvP. Um, it would allow him, you know, not to get one shot or something like that by like an Alicia. Um, but then it would also be bad because then he doesn't have some kind of sustain or survivability whenever it comes to these boss fights because he keeps getting uh, the invincibility, you know, uh, over and over again as long as it's every two rounds based on his cooldown. So he grants himself a stack of invincible at the start of his turn, and then it removes the invincible upon taking an attack and launches a counterattack with his basic ability. Um, this is actually really cool. Um, his basic ability actually can do some decent damage, and it can trigger twice, and it kind of counts as like a bonus attack, so you can trigger Guan Yu off of the counterattack, uh, which I'll show in RTA clip as well. So uh, this is actually a really good trait. Uh, being able to get in, you know, multiple attacks. He's usually going to be paired with somebody like a Shane, um, you know, like Guan Yu, uh, Muriel, heroes like that, where the more attacks, uh, the better. It also is really good for some of the talents in Guild versus Environment. So, very solid trait. Whenever he is A5, which mine is, he gains control immunity for two turns at the start of the battle, which is really cool. Uh, so he can't be stunned, he can't be controlled by, uh, uh, sorry, I'm drawing a blank here, Desdemona. He can't have that uh, energy reversal put up on him by, uh, by Adeline. The problem is, is obviously he's squishy. You know, he's a damage dealer. So the invincibility is really important. The, the application for him in an arena setting is going to be really specific. I could see him being pretty solid for an arena offense team uh, because Fahim actually can be pretty fast. But overall, I would still say that his his utility is going to be in uh, guild boss and guild versus environment. That's where he's gonna shine. But he does have some application in other areas, which is actually why I booked him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's his trait. So his basic ability deals 130% damage to an enemy and it launches a bonus attack um, again. So he'll do this twice if the target is less than 30% health. So if he attacks somebody with his basic ability and then after the first attack, their health is below 30%, he'll do it again. This is, this is really nice when it comes to specific ancient relic tiles. Um, but that kind of applies a little bit more in uh, PvP, but still a really good basic ability. So the passive says when attacking the same, same enemy repeatedly, increases damage dealt by 55% and reduces the cooldown of the ultimate ability by one turn. Now, uh, this 55% is kind of like static. It doesn't increase another 55% if you attack the person again. It's kind of just an additional 55% damage on top of your abilities. Uh, the more you attack that hero. So it's just static 55%. Uh, so that's good, but what makes this really good is it reduces the cooldown of the ultimate ability by one turn. 
and the name of the game with Fahim is to always have his ultimate ability up. So Fahim's ultimate ability grants himself attack up and then deals 240% damage to the enemy and then inflicts this massacre mark debuff to them for one turn, which is why it's really important uh, as to why the passive reduces the ultimate cooldown because you want this massacre mark up all the time on bosses or guild boss. Um, massacre mark is essentially just a reverse joint attack. A joint attack on heroes is like a buff where massacre mark is the opposite and it's a debuff on somebody so anytime that person is attacked if they have massacre mark on them fahim then goes in and does a joint attack on the person that has massacre mark um, this is really good because if you pair him with guan yu he is literally joint attacking on every single person's turn and that means that guan yu will then also joint attack on every single person's turn so you pump out a lot of damage, which is why Fahim, I think, is top tier for guild boss um, and why he's so good in guild versus environment, because he really enables uh, Guan Yu. So as I said, I got him booked. Um, I don't have the best books here. Um, I'm still missing the one for, his, uh, for the bottom row on gear, but I do have all of his abilities booked out, and then I do have speed. You know, eventually it's probably it probably makes sense for me to fully book him 15 of 15 i would have preferred if i missed this tree just because the true strike doesn't really do anything for him unless you're playing him in pvp and he's just not great there um but he is fast so the speed to attack is actually a pretty uh valuable boost um so yeah ideally you know, if you book Fahim, you want like six of six on the physique and four of four here. So like your ideal scenario would be 10 books just on the left and center trees. And then you don't have to worry about the ability mastery. But for now, I'm saving up books in in uh, preparation for the seasonal hero. And like I said, he is a five. If you want to use Fahim in a PvP setting, you purely just need like you don't need him to be ascended um his ascensions he gets i think attack on his a1 yeah so if he's ascended one that's really all you need so there's two different builds for him so i i kind of just have him in speed gear and broken gear um these are his stats 6500 attack and 352 crit damage with uh 281 speed so the 281 is actually uh it was important for my guild boss composition uh for those of you who don't know you need to get like within a threshold of speed with the total speeds of your heroes it needs to be right around 805 speed uh this helps you calculate uh like who gets the bonus turns uh, on guild boss so the speed requirements are kind of important I'm not going to go into detail about that. I'm just going to showcase Fahim and kind of what his output is uh, in the game and why you should kind of invest in this hero. Although he doesn't need to be booked, but uh, booking him just, you know, maximizes your damage. So this is the first build. This is a guild boss and guild versus environment uh, composition. And then the other build that I have for him is in PvP. And that is maximizing his attack stat. Uh, because of uh, true strike so you don't need as much crit damage you want to get right around 60 percent crit rate ideally but he is pretty quick so he's at 333 speed which is nice um, you know it can outspeed a decent amount of people um, and i do have some rta matches uh, two of them i i lost the matches but it goes uh it shows you how he pairs well with guan yu so anyway those are the two builds uh, that's Fahim. I'm going to show you some uh, clips now. We got Guild Boss, we got an Ancient Relic clip, and then we also have uh, RTA. So let's jump over to those. Okay, so this first clip is just showing the Guild Boss team. Um, I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to show you basically why Fahim is good, and then we're just, uh, I'll show you the end result. So you got Shane, you got Fahim, you got Guan Yu, and you got jacob so this composition you have the passive or the trade ability from shane where the more attacks you take per turn you're ramping up your raw damage uh, guan yu really uh benefits from fahim joint attacking 
every single turn because of that massacre mark up on the guild boss. And Jacob allows himself to take upwards of seven to eight turns. And every time he's attacking on those turns, Fahim is literally going in and joint attacking and then bringing in Guan Yu. So you're just maximizing so much damage. And uh, we're going to put up the finish, uh, the, the final uh, points here on the screen. And we'll just show you, you know, why Fahim is so good. So these are the end results, you know. So Fahim is doing good damage, 6 million damage, which is, you know, more than Jacob. Um, but the key is he allows Guan Yu to literally come in on every single attack which is where his utility is you're going to get the same result on you know guild versus environment bosses but that's that's his true purpose is to be an enabler so um yeah you don't need to book him you don't need to have him ascended five or anything like that but uh you know if he is uh ascended one and he has some books in him you're just gonna be able to maximize your damage but that's the kind of results that you can get out of Fahim on Guild Boss. On to the next clip. So something that's really great with Fahim in um, Guild vs. Environment is if you don't have Divine Yolanda and you have Guan Yu, Cordelia, and uh, Fahim, you can actually one-shot these uh, Ancient Relic tiles. So if you don't have the Divine Yolanda to you know do the balancing of the health and all that stuff, uh, this definitely allows you to go in and do that. So I was kind of checking my talents there. Make sure you have the right ones. Now, I know we have a couple talents, but even if you don't have the talents that we have, uh, you still should be able to one-shot. Uh, and you'll see on this run that we actually clear... <laughs> I think I clear it after like round uh, four or five... But that's obviously because of the talents, but it goes to show that even if you just have 10 rounds, you don't have like this max damage or whatever, uh, you're still able to do it. So with a Divine Yolanda team, you know, you'd go after the weakest person um, with the Cordelia Morph and uh, you would then balance the HPs out between that front guy, uh, which is like the Royce lookalike. Um, with Lunar Melisa. So you would fight the Royce looking guy, um, get him down to a really low level or HP, and then you would balance the HP of Lunar Melisa. But because we don't have Divine Yolanda, we're just going after her because she, um, you know, she puts up those taunts and she puts up stuns. So we really don't want that. So we're just going to morph her. And you can see here already in round two, um, a hero or an enemy that has tons of HP is just getting melted away. Um, and yeah, it's it's uh, pretty impressive the amount of damage that this, uh, that this team's able to accomplish. And uh, Fahim always just has his Massacre markup. So anyway, we're gonna fast forward through this. We'll show you that at one shots and we'll move on to some RTA matches. All right, so as I said at the beginning of uh, the video here, I, I end up losing these two matches, but the important thing is to just show uh, the interaction between Guan Yu and Fahim. So uh, we'll cut to that gameplay, and I'll walk you through it. All right, so here's the squad. Banning the Balbareth. People afraid of my Balb. <laughs> 
Okay, so we do get Fahim and Guan Yu through. So Fahim is actually faster than the Ashlyn here. I actually messed up on the draft. I shouldn't have picked Jocasta. I forgot about Wilsey um, because that kind of screwed the whole thing up. Um, but if Wilsey wasn't there, I, I probably would have been okay. But here, because he has the control immunity up, uh, he actually doesn't, uh, he can't be stunned by the Ashlyn. But you'll see whenever his invincibility goes away, he counterattacks, and then she's less than 30% health. So then he uses his basic again and kills her. So that's kind of cool. Um, obviously, with the Guan Yu being stunned, you don't get to see the bonus attack, um, but you'll see it in the next match. But uh, you do get to see that uh, counterattack and bonus attack in action there. So let's jump to the next uh, gameplay video. So this is against uh, the same guy, our teammate, and he knew it was me, so he went all RGB because he's a bro. <laughs> so I was happy and proud of him for doing that. That was cool. Um, so yeah, here you'll actually get to see the counterattack. Um, so the Jerome uh, ends up being pretty quick here, but his Shane is A5, so he actually saves the Jocasta. So we're in a similar spot where he can stun uh, the Guan Yu if he wants to, but what's, what he ends up doing is he switches modes with the Ashlyn. Um, so the Massacre Mark isn't the thing that matters here. It's the counterattack from uh, Fahim. His second attack goes off, and that counts as a bonus attack, which allows Guan Yu to come in. So it's a it's a cool interaction. Sadly, though, the meta is kind of just a little too overpowered for Fahim. And uh, it's not really going to be something that works. But uh, surprisingly, I end up losing this. Uh, it's just good uh, gameplay by uh, our, our buddy here. So props to him. And uh, he gets, you know, bonus points for... Uh, for going all RGB, but yeah, I just wanted to show you the interactions and possibilities of Fahim there. So, um, anyway, guys, that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.